Right, so in this video, I thought, what kind of app will actually make you money? And I thought I will build an Amazon web scraper that will actually get you the best deals of the day. So this is gonna be cool. We're gonna be using these tools and just these tools and not that much code to be honest. So if you're interested in this video, please do watch along. Once again, these are the tools that I will be using. So React for the front end, Node.js for the back end, and Oxy Labs for the scraper. And what we're gonna do is build this app in which we're gonna scrape the last price and the newest price to find out the biggest percentage difference and in turn get the best deals of the day. So what are we waiting for? Let's do it. Now we are only building this for Amazon, but of course you can add other websites too. That's why I left these buttons here for you. It will simply require the same logic so you can take this project, take it to the next level, make it your own, really, you know, give it that extra push because it's yours. Okay, so first off, we're just going to sign up to the web scraper and use the free version. Okay, so please go ahead and click try free for one week. Just use the uh, link in the video description below or you can try copy this out. It is up to you. So I'm going to go in here. So I've already signed up, so I will already have the credentials to do this. But just please go ahead and, you know, fill this out and so on. I'm just going to sign in as me. So I've chosen to sign in with my Google account. So super simple. By the way, for those of you who might not know about this brand, Oxy Labs is the fastest growing web intelligence platform in Europe at the moment, offering both premium proxies and web scraping solutions. As you can see, they have Resi, Share DC proxies, as well as different types of scrapers. I really like the e-commerce scraper. So today that's what I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using the e-commerce scraper API by Oxy Labs in order to build out my project. And then once you are here, well, we're going to need the documentation for the e-commerce scraper to be precise. And while we're using this, uh, this will just allow us to get the data back in a much better format that Oxylab has already kind of sorted out for us. So you could use a web scraper or you could use a specific web scraper. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. And already it is kind of done for Amazon, Walmart, eBay and so on. So it already has all the right documentation. All we're going to have to do is pass through some stuff with the body in order to get the correct data back. So it really saves a hassle for us um, to view all the different kind of responses you can get. Just go to the documentation for this. And essentially, we're going to be using this in order to build out our request. So I'm going to go ahead and click Amazon. So this is what we're going to use. We're going to put source as Amazon. So let's go ahead and start using this documentation in order to get back data. So first off, I'm just going to build out a simple Node.js backend that's going to power our app and I'm going to do so in WebStorm. So let's go ahead and create a new project. I'm going to make sure to make this a React project. OK, and then let's go ahead and call this React Amazon deal finder and it's going to use this command. OK, so if you are not using WebStorm and using something else, just please go ahead and find the directory you want to store your project in. So, for example, it could be development and then use the command npx create react app and then you can call it whatever you want. OK, so that's what you would do and hit enter. But I'm not going to do it this way because I'm using WebStorm, which will do it all for me. So react name the project, whatever you want. Check you're in the correct repository. I'm going to save it in WebStorm projects. And this is the command you're going to use and click create. So that is now doing its thing. OK, so in here you'll see all the uh, necessary files and configuration done for me. Once that is finished running, it should say happy hacking. OK, and that is now done. So you'll see all these files here. OK, we will clean this up. However, first off, let's just create our backend quickly. I'm going to create a new file. So I'm just going to click here on the same level as the readme. I'm going to call it server.js as essentially we are going to be building a mini backend. So that's what I'm going to call it. So I'm going to add that. You will see that file here. 
let's make this a little bit bigger now the first things that i'm going to do well first off maybe let's try just make sure that everything is working okay i'm going to use a try and catch statement so try catch and we're just going to make a request to the oxylabs api okay we're just going to console it out to check everything is working as it should i'm just going to console error the error maybe let's put error just so it's uh, obvious that that is an error object and what i'm going to do is try well we can see from the documentation just going to create a body that we're going to pass through that we're going to pass through a few things with the body uh, when we fetch a URL so let's use await fetch and we're going to have a URL that is correct and then we are also going to pass through the method which is going to be a post method the body which is going to be essentially the body here but we're going to have to pass it through JSON stringify and then as the headers, thank you tab nine for completing that for me. It is content type application JSON. And then we'll also have to put, have to put through some authorization. This is actually going to say basic plus, and then we're going to use our username and password from Oxylabs and pass it through. So maybe let's get that username and password so we can communicate with Oxylabs first. So let's just go back here, click get started and start your free trial. Agree with the terms, start free trial. Okay. And let's start. So my username, you can essentially put whatever you want. I'm going to put my username as this and then set a password. Okay. I'm just going to show you to show you what it looks like, but I will be disabling this pretty soon. So great. Let's create an API user. Once that is done, just close that down and you should see something like this. So we are now connected with a username and password. Just make sure to use that same username and password in here. So in fact, I'm just going to define it. So const user name equals and then I'm just going to put the same username and the same password that I had. Okay, so that's all I am going to do. So now I'm going to, with the authorization, use buffer from and pass through the username and password to string base 64. Now, just in case it does some funky behavior, you can put it in backticks uh, as well. So it's all one string. It's up to you how you want to do it. And then to make sure that this is picked up as code, I use the dollar sign and the curly braces and the dollar sign and the curly braces. So that is now all one string. I'm not adding a string plus a string plus a string. That was all one string, but it really is uh, whatever you prefer. Oops, that should not be like that because those pluses would also be picked up as a string. So you could use the previous way or this way. It is totally up to you. Okay, so quote marks, back ticks. And quote marks again. Okay, so we've written our fetch request. We now need to actually pass the, the URL that we want to fetch from. So now let's go back to the documentation. Well, the type of scrape that I want to do is actually an Amazon search. So if let's go to Amazon search, uh, and once again, the source changes. So the source is now going to be Amazon search. So in fact, let's take that and I'm just going to pass that through with the body. So let's go ahead and do that here. Source Amazon search. The query is also going to be required. As you'll see, these two are in green. They are required. So let's also put that through just like so and see what we need to pass through for that is the UFT encoded keyword. Okay, so that just means whatever we are searching on Amazon. So for example, if I go to Amazon, 
It means whatever we're searching here. So I can put deal of the day if I wanted to, and it should come back with some deals for me. Okay, great. So in fact, let's maybe go back here and I'm just gonna pass that through in here like so. Wonderful. And this is what we want to get. I wanna get the last price and the current price and see the exact percentage difference for all of these to figure out what the best deal actually is. So this is gonna help us do that. So we're gonna to have to essentially get the two prices coming back to us. I can even go to Node.js, which is what we are writing it in. And essentially we're just copying this, right? So as you will see, I've already done a wait fetch. I've already passed through the method of post, the body, the headers. And now this is the URL we need to fetch to. So I'm just gonna steal that and whack it in here. Great. Of course, we do need to save this to a response as well so we can then console log out the JSON. So I'm just going to do that quickly too. So we're gonna wait for this to do its thing as fetch, the fetch keyword as an async function. So we're waiting for that to resolve then saving it to response. And once that's done its thing, so when this is finished, I'm just gonna console log the response but get its JSON. But uh-oh, this is also an async method, which means we need to await this too. Cool. Now, let's go back and see what else we need. So we've got the source and we've got the query. That was all it really wanted us to do, but we can also pass through the pages. And if we want to see the response in a nice format, we don't want it all like kind of bunched up in HTML, we need to pass through pass true as well. So let's copy that. I'm going to put through pass true. Maybe let's just make it double quote to make it the same as the others, just to keep it neat. I'm gonna make sure that we're on the American site, so domain, I'm gonna put com. Of course, you have all these others to choose from as well. If you go to Amazon, so back on the page we kind of were before, along with all these sources that we can pass through. So for example, we're working with Amazon Search, so we get a search, you can get Amazon reviews, Amazon pricing, and so on. And here are all the domains, which will give you these different marketplaces. So I've gone with com, which is United States, but you can choose any of the others as well. Great. So once again, let's go back here. Just make sure that we are keeping in line with this. I think we have everything we want. Maybe we can also bring back the amount of pages. So I'm just going to put pages and then you can change pages uh, depending on you know how many pages you want to bring back. I'm going to go with one because we're just doing a kind of demo at the moment. Okay, now that we have done all that, I'm going to do some routing next. So let's define our port. We're just going to define a route, meaning that if we visit a certain URL, we should be able to see all this data in the browser. So let's define the port that we want to see this on. It is going to be 8,000 for this tutorial. We're going to need a few packages. One is going to be express. The other one is going to be cause so that we don't get any weird cause messages. And now I'm going to get express. So essentially this package has been stored under the const express and I need to release all of its wonderfulness. And now I'm gonna save it under the const app instead. This just means and now I can use the const app and once again, all the methods that come with express have been attached to this one variable essentially, or one constant to be precise. So I'm gonna use app use, which is a method that comes with express and pass through cause and call it so that we can essentially override any cause messages in our app. Great, now I'm gonna listen out to the port. So all I'm gonna do is use app again and a method from express called listen and thanks tab nine to essentially listen out to port 8000 and we'll just say listening on port and then we're going to pass through the port. Great. So this is looking good. I'm just going to install these packages. So we're going to do npm i express 
and cores as well so just install those two and once they are done they should show up in the package json file along with the versions we are using so if for some reason nothing's working perhaps it could be down to the version that we are using so just revert back to these instead okay so just change the numbers and run npm i again but of course i'm not going to do that because i'm happy with this as it is great so now let's carry on we're going to write our root so our root um, i'm going to do this here i'm going to do app and once again use a method called get and we're just going to say that if we go to localhost 8000 forward slash deals we can get the deals of the day i'm just going to change that to be multiple as the query we're going to pass through into amazon this of course needs to be an async function as we are using the await keywords so now I'm just going to open that up and get all the code that we wrote before. So all of this, cut that so you should look like this at the moment and paste it all in like that. OK, I'm just going to make this bigger so you can kind of see what it looks like. But there we go. So this is looking good. Now, I just need to write a quick way to start this up. So I'm just going to go into my package JSON once more. And this is the script to start our React front end. So I'm just going to add front end to this script. And we need one to start our back end. So I'm going to do start back end. And this is going to be no daemon. So to listen out for constant changes on the file server.js. So that's all I'm going to do. And no daemon is another package I need to install. So once again, npm i no daemon. And once again, that is to listen out for constant changes on that file. So not just one change, constant changes. Great. So now let's use this script. So I'm going to do npm run start backend. And that is now listening out to port 8000. It will listen out to constant changes on this file. And if I visit localhost 8000 forward slash deals, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to visit it right now. Localhost 8000 forward slash deals. That will say loading and go back to WebStorm and look in the terminal. You will see that job is done. You will see a job ID if you ever need that and the content. Now we could display it in here or we could just send it to the browser so that we can view it in here. It is up to you. I'm just going to display in the browser. So all I'm going to do is use, well, first off, let's actually save the data, I think, as something. So await response JSON, just make this a little bit bigger for you. And we can just send the data so I can do res send data. OK, so we're using this res here and we are sending it to the browser. So now if you refresh, ta-da, that content, instead of just saying object, has an object of all the Amazon deals, along with the price that is struck through and the new price. So these are the two things that we're going to use in order to find out which has the biggest price difference in percentage. So let's do it. I'm actually going to do this on the back end. So what I'm going to do is actually get the data and get the results and go into the first object. OK, because this is the data. I'm going to go to the results. This is the first object and it's going to give us all of this. Right, so we need to go into that object and get the content and then the results and then the organic results because this is essentially the array that I want to work with. That is the array of all our uh, essential deal objects, right? So each one of these, OK, that's what that represents. So what did I say? We need to go into the content and then go into the content object and get the results and then get into the results object and get the organic results. So let's save this as well. We could just save this as results if we want. So that's what I'm going to do. And now we need to filter those results. 
by the ones that have a price strike through because some of them won't right and we don't really care about those because we just want the ones that have a price strike through to get the best deals okay so for example these ones don't so to filter that out all i would do is well let's define this as something i'm going to define as const filtered deals I'm going to get the results, I'm going to use the filter method and I'm going to get each deal and only return back a new array if the price strike through exists. Okay, so the filter deals will now be a new array and we're just going to filter out the deals that have a price strike through. That is how you would do that. So hopefully that is useful to some of you. Next, we need to sort. So this time I'm going to use the sort method to get the sorted by best deal. Uh, and I'm going to get the filtered deals. And this time I'm going to use the sort method. I'm going to compare A to B. So that is right. Thank you, tab nine, for suggesting that. However, I want it in descending order so from the highest to the lowest so just flip that around and what I'm going to do I'm just going to get rid of that actually is get the a price strike through to price strike through making sure to spell it exactly the same and I'm going to rem minus the original price so this is how essentially you'll get a percentage uh, so we're going to do that and in fact i'm going to wrap that around in its own parenthesis and then i'm going to do over a price strike through multiplied by 100 so that will get me the percentage and i'm just going to compare that so minus to b Price strike through minus B price over B price strike through multiplied by 100. Okay, so for all you math wizards, hopefully that makes sense. And for those of you who uh, maybe don't understand this, maybe just take your time with this to understand how you would compare percentages or even get percentages from two numbers. Those two numbers, once again, are the price strike through. We're getting that. We're minusing the price and then we are dividing over the price strike through multiplied by 100 to get a percentage. Great. So now we have that sorted by the best deals. I'm just going to send that data to our browser instead. So this should come back to me with the best deals. Okay. So the first one, price strike to 59.99 and the original price was 19.99. So that does seem like quite a big difference. And if you scroll down, those differences should be smaller. So 15.99 and 9.97, that is looking good. Great. We managed to sort it. We managed to send it to our browser. Now let's use this to build out our front end next. So, okay, this is what this whole file should look like. I'm happy with that. Maybe let's just try to delete some spaces, but of course you can clean this up later on. Uh, we are going to have to hide these and put them in a .env file, but we'll do that at the end. Great. So now let's work on our front end. So in the source directory, I'm just going to delete everything we don't need. In fact, I'm just going to delete these as well. So I'm not going to have an app CSS file. So let's go ahead and delete that. I'm also not going to have any tests. So I'm going to delete these. I'm not going to have a logo. So delete these three. Delete anyway. Uh, and we're not going to write any tests. So I'm going to delete the app test JS file. Wonderful. And here again, I'm just going to delete everything to do with tests or anything like that. I'm also going to get rid of the semicolon. So I don't really like it. So that's all I'm deleting. We'll keep the index CSS and we'll keep these as well. So now my index CSS, I'm just going to delete everything so we can start fresh. And the app file, once again, I'm just going to, well, let's just go ahead and delete everything apart from the div with the class name of app. I'm going to change this to be a smaller letter though. And I'm going to change this to be a functional expression just because that's the way I prefer to work in. Okay, and we got rid of that app CSS file. So, 
this is what my app.js file looks like. This is what my index.css file looks like. This is what my index.js file looks like. And that's all we have in the source directory. So just make sure you're at this point. Great. So now let's run this. I'm just going to get my terminal. Let's make a new tab and I'm going to do npm run start. And if you look in the package JSON, we rename this. I'm going to use start front end. So let's just paste that and hit enter. And that should spin up my app on localhost 3000, just as it's doing right now. Great. And let's inspect this page. At the moment, it doesn't really have anything in it, but of course we will be building this out. Cool. So let's just delete that. I'm going to minimize that and let's carry on. The index.js file is fine. Let's work on the app.js file first. So first, let's work on getting that data in here, right? So I'm going to uh, write a function. It's going to be called get deals. And this is going to be an async function as we are going to use the await keyword in here. I'm going to use try and catch again. So try and then catch. We're going to catch any errors and console error, any errors. And what are we going to try to do? Well, we're going to await, we're going to use the fetch keyword to fetch a URL. This time the URL is literally our one that we are running here. So our backend, so just copy that and paste it in like so. And then we're going to have to pass through the method. It's going to be a method of get. So that's all we're going to do. And now let's say this as something, I'm going to save it as the response. We're going to essentially wait for the response, get its JSON, but uh oh, that's an async method, which means we need to await it. It needs to be resolved. And let's save this as data. And then all I'm going to do is, well, the data, let's save it to state. So I'm going to essentially do that using use state. So I'm going to have to import and use effect from React. So I've imported those two. And now I'm going to define a uh, how we're going to use use state up here. So const deals, set deals, use state. And this starts out with an empty array, or we could just put null to start off with. And I'm going to use set deals to change this deals value by passing through data here. So once again, use state works by essentially we're passing through null in here, and this null goes root here. So now deals has the value of null. And to change the value of deals, we use set deals. So I'm using set deals here and passing through data to change the value of deals to data. Great. So this is looking good. And now I'm going to put this in a use effect. So let's pass through a function and then pass through the dependencies because if the dependencies change, we want to rerun this. So that is what my use effect is going to look like, just format it a little bit better. And we want to essentially get the deals. Great. So this is looking good. And now if I console log deals and look in the browser, we should be getting them on the front end, which we do. Nice. So we're essentially getting that data from our back end and getting it in our front end. Now you might be wondering, why don't we just do this in the front end? Well, that is because we have a username and a password that we don't want on the front end. we need to keep that on the back end. So that is why I did that. Great. Let's carry on. So now let's use this data in order to map it all out onto little cards, but let's do some uh, styling first. So let's create a header. So we're going to create some components for this. I'm going to, in the source directory, create a new directory and call it components just so we can keep our code all neat and tidy. And I'm going to create a new JavaScript file and I'm going to call it header JS. And this is going to be for our header. So I'm just going to do const header and then we are going to return a div that says header for now, and I'm going to do export default header. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to do the same for a card. So new JavaScript file, let's call it card.js. Uh, and then let's go ahead and just copy all of this. And I'm going to rename it to const card 
let's put card here and export default card and that's it we're just going to have two components for this project and i'm going to go ahead and import them into here so i'm going to import card from card making sure to go into the components directory and get that card file okay great and do the same for the header so import header from components header wonderful so we're just going from here into components and getting card and then from here into components and getting header now in here i'm just going to return the header component wrapped in the div with the class name of app so that's all i've done so now if we look in here we see that showing up and if you look in the elements you look in the body in the div id root here is the div with the class name of app and then as you will see here is the div with the h1 heading of header so essentially all of that is being injected instead of this great now i also want to have a nav so i'm just going to literally use the nav uh html element and then we're going to have a few buttons however some are going to be disabled but you can go ahead and enable them once you have got to terms with how to use the e-commerce scraper from oxy labs so i'm going to put amazon as that is what we're going to be doing let's give this the class name of a primary button as that's how i'm going to be styling it and then let's have some others so let's maybe have four and let's see what else the oxy labs ecom scraper uh has to offer so essentially we can do amazon we can do aliexpress so if you want to do aliexpress you can do that you can do ebay and etsy so maybe let's do those ebay and also etsy great so i think that is fine let's move on i'm also going to make this button disabled as i'm not going to be doing this for the tutorial i'm not going to be adding uh you know getting these in this tutorial itself which is why i'm disabling them but again you can if you want to great so at the moment our app will look like this we've got some buttons next let's work on the card so i'm going to go back in here we've imported the card and so i think after the nav bar i'm just going to create another div it's going to be an empty div and it's going to hold a heading of best deal because it's going to show the best deal at the top and then i'm going to create another div because this is essentially going to be our feed right so i'm going to give this the class name of feed so we can style it up as a feed and in here what i'm going to do is say that if deals exists so that is what the question mark is for. I'm going to map out each deal onto, in fact, we don't need this as we're not going to use the index, a card element. So I'm simply going to grab the card element like so, or the card component, I should say. And as the key, I'm just going to use the deal POS because there is something in here. If you look at each one of these, I'm just going to use the POS as the unique identifier as believe they're all unique so that's what i'm going to pass through and then i'm just going to pass through the whole deal itself okay because in my deals each one of these objects is represented by a deal in this case so there we have the key and then the item we're going to pass through is just that whole deal object great and this should say if deals exist right because we're checking if this array exists and if it does we're mapping out onto the cart element wonderful so this is looking good so that means that now the card element has props so all i'm going to do is destructure that item okay so once again here is that card the only thing we want to structure is that item so that's what i'm doing here and now if i console log the item so maybe let's get rid of this console log here console logging out the deals and i'm just going to refresh you will see each one of those items is now being console logged out 
okay? Because we're mapping them out onto each card. And at the moment, we're just console logging it. But I want to get rid of this H1 element and replace it. For example, we can replace it with the title. So that's what I'm going to do. This is the item object. So I'm going to use dot notation to get the title. So back on the card, instead of having card here, I'm just going to do item title, okay? And this just means that we now get the title of each one of our deals showing up. So this is looking good. Uh, however, what other information do we want? So I think the other information we should have, well, first off, maybe let's give this div the class name of card so we can pick it out. So that's what I'm gonna do. And next, I'm maybe let's just get rid of this for now because I actually want to have a div that is gonna hold an image. So the image that we have, uh, I think for now, let's just leave it like this. I'm gonna give this the class name of image container so that we can style it up. So image container. And this image as the source is gonna take the URL image. So that's what we're going to take. So item.url image. And as the alternative, we can just put the item title if we want so that the visually impaired know what this is an image of. Okay. So there's our div with the image container. Next, I'm going to have another div. This is going to have the class name of text container. Text container. And then I think we should have another one and I'm going to just give this the class name of info container. Our text container, well, I guess this is where the title should go. So I'm going to put in an H5 element and that was the item title. However, it was very long. I'm just going to shorten it. So const title for matted and I'm going to get the item title and I'm going to use slice on it and just shorten it to have 20 characters, which means that now I'm just going to pass through the title formatted instead. So there you go. You will see it kind of cuts off. So we can do something like dot, dot, dot to make it obvious that it's been cut off. Okay. There are all our titles. Now that we have the title, I'm just going to actually get the some more information. Um, so I think here we should probably have, I'm going to, well, maybe let's put the rating here too. So I'm going to have a P element and have the rating just like so. And I'm going to get the item dot, and then let's see how to get the rating. Just, just the word rating. So I'm just going to put that in here. And here, let's actually show the uh, price drop. So price drop from, and then we're going to have the item price strike through to, and then the item price. But I also want to, I guess, show the percentage drop as well, because at the moment it will just kind of tell me that, and I believe all of them have it. So good, they should, because that's what we, that's the code that we wrote in the back end. And next, let's get the percentage drop. So let's define it here, percentage drop equals, and I am going to get the item price strike through minus the item price over the item price strike through multiplied by a hundred. I'm just going to put this on a new line for you. And I'm going to do it to fixed zero. So that just means I can now get the percentage drop and I'm just going to put it here. In fact, I'm going to put in a little circle. So I'm going to create a div and then I'm just going to pass through the percentage drop and let's give this the class name of circle as that's what we're going to style it up as. 
Great. And then finally, I'm just going to use an A tag and I'm going to put the word go. And the href to this is going to be, well, it's going to be the URL, right? But that's the image URL. This is the URL, but we're going to have to append something to the beginning of it. So I'm going to use back ticks. I'm going to do HTTPS uh, forward slashes www.amazon.com we did say we want the American one and then I'm going to put in the code and this is just going to be the item URL okay so let's check that works so if I click here it should take me to the actual Amazon site and it does that is looking great whoops I just shut that down though localhost 3000 so let's go ahead and inspect this page again cool and we should probably add a percentage sign in here too. So wonderful. This is all looking so, so good. I think we need to style it up. However, before we move on and do that, I'm just going to work on the header next. So the header, there's not going to be much here. All I'm going to do is actually get today's date. So let's define today and I'm going to use new date. This should be an equals. And I'm just going to do to string and I'm going to use slice to get the first 10 characters. And now in here, I'm just going to give this, uh, let's maybe use the header to be semantically correct. So the header element and I'm going to create a div. It's going to have the title of our app, which is deal finder and then in a p element i'm just going to literally put today so whatever we defined as today uh, let's also give this the class name of a text container and then i'm going to have another div here which is going to be the logo container so i'm going to use class name equals logo container okay and then I'm gonna have an image here uh, and as the alt text I'm going to put logo and as the source here I'm just going to actually let's make another directory so here I'm going to make a new directory this is going to be for images and actually we're just going to have one image in here but still I'm just going to put that in its own directory and just drag it in like so and refactor add and that just means that now I can import it to be used in here uh, I'm going to go ahead and do import I'm going to call this logo and then I'm just going to go into the images and get the logo uh, from here but it's called deal finder png so I'm going to have to find that file so deal finder png great so import logo from and then we are going to find that image and that just means I can use logo in here great and this is a self-closing element and just make sure that path is correct we don't need to go back twice we just need to go back once so ta-da we are now getting everything in here let's get to styling everything up so if you want to stop here and style it up yourself, please feel free or you can copy my styling that is up to you. I'm just going to get up the index CSS file so we can do that. So first off, I'm going to import a font. So I'm going to import URL and I'm going to go to Google Fonts. So let's go ahead. In fact, I'm just going to shut some of these down now. Let's go to Google fonts I'm going to search for poppins so this one right here and just go ahead and you know select whichever ones you want I'm going to go ahead and select just a few of these but it is totally up to you okay and if you click on the selected families I can import so I'm going to choose to import and I'm just going to take this whole piece of code and essentially just paste it in like so so there's the semicolon there's all my widths for pop-ins and now I can use it in here okay 
great so that's all I wanted to do now I'm going to get the whole body of my app and just kind of uh, start fresh by giving it a margin of zero and a padding of zero. The background color of my app, I'm going to make it this kind of off white, which is 235, 235, 235, which I picked out earlier. So that's for the background. Um, next, I want to make sure that the app is centered. So I'm going to use display flex. Uh, and justify content center to center it from left to right. I need to give it a height. So I'm going to go 100% of the viewport height in order so I can center everything from top to bottom as well. And I can do that using a line item center. Okay, so this will not work without that or this, and this will not work without this. Cool. So now that I've done that, I also want to say that my whole body will have the font family pop-ins and sans serif as a backup. And the color for this text is going to be kind of like a dark grayish, which is 50, 43, 5, 1. Okay. And there we go. So at the moment, you won't really see that much, but of course we have more to style. So now that the body is done, let's actually grab the element with the class name of app. So essentially the thing that holds everything together. So my app, well, I'm just going to hard code the width, okay? Because it is a kind of widget, I guess, that we are building. Uh, the height is going to be 680 pixels. I'm going to round it off with a border radius. I'm going to make sure that is 50 pixels, so quite large. And the background, this background is actually going to be a radial gradient. So that's what I'm going to use. It's going to be a circle. And then I'm just going to put this on a new line. Uh, actually, 236 is what I want to use. 236, 236, but nice guess, tab 9. And then it's going to go to white. So 255, 255, 255. Um, and this I want to be solid and at finish at 80%. Great. Now, I also want to pad this out, so space it out from everything we put in here. 60 pixels from the top and bottom and 30 pixels from the left and right, and give it a box shadow. So my box shadow is going to be transparent, so use RGBA. I'm going to make it black with 0.1 opacity, and then I'm going to say 0x axis, 4 pixels y axis, and 12 pixels blur. So that's what my app will look like at the moment. It's kind of hard to see, but there it is. It's right there. Cool. So I think we should probably start putting some stuff into it so that we can see stuff a little bit better. But for now, this is looking great. I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller as I am kind of zoomed in. And this is what I ideally want it to look like and what you should be viewing it as as well. So. Now let's grab the header. So the header HTML element, I'm just going to use display flex, initialize flex box, and I'm going to use justify content, not center, but space between to space out everything evenly from left to right. Uh, so at the moment, the header will look like this, even though it's hard to tell because of the logo. I'm also going to give it a position of relative because I'm going to want to position stuff inside the header. Um, and also I want to make sure that any P element inside the header has a lighter color, which is going to be this lighter gray, which I picked out earlier. So just like that. Now the logo container, which is the essentially this that holds the logo. So it's a div that holds the image. I want to set a height for that. So I'm going to make sure that the height of this is 50 pixels. Um, and I'm just going to make sure that the image that lives inside the logo container, so any image element that lives inside the element with the class name of logo container, it's going to have a height of 100%. Okay, so now that should look like this. And I want to position it actually from the top by 20 pixels and to the right 10 pixels, which is why we use position relative, which means that now on here, I can also use position relative and do top 20 pixels, right, 10 pixels. So that should just make it look a little bit more centered with that. Great. Now I'm also going to, what shall we do next? I think maybe let's 
pick out the H2 element here and I'm just going to say that any H2 element that lives in my whole app, I want the font weight to be 400. And I'm just going to get rid of the margin bottom. So margin bottom, I'm going to overwrite as being zero. Okay, I just wanted to get rid of that so that this font looks more like this and everything below is kind of more squashed together. Wonderful. So perhaps maybe let's even move that to the top as it is kind of a generic thing. So I'm going to move it up here. Great. Now I'm going to get the nav element. So the nav element, I'm actually going to use display flex, initialize flex box. And I'm going to say the width is 330 pixels because I actually want to give it a scroll on the X axis. So I'm going to go overflow X scroll so we can scroll through all the buttons. Before that, I need to constrain it to a width. Okay. And if I want to actually, well, let's make the buttons bigger first. So I think we should do that. I'm going to say that any button that has the class of primary on it, which all of our buttons do, I'm going to give a border of none, a background color of RGB 3, 140, 140. So it's a kind of green. Let's pad it out. I'm going to do 18 pixels all around. The font should be white. So I'm going to do RGB 255, 255, 255. The font size, I'm going to make sure it's a bit larger. So 20 pixels. Let's round it off. So I'm going to make it 15 pixels border radius. Uh, margin, I'm going to only give it a margin right of five pixels, okay? Just so each one is spaced out. And if we go over it, I want the cursor to be a pointer. So at the moment, they look like this. Now you can see this, I want to get rid of this. I'm going to show you how to do that. So to get rid of that, I'm just going to actually um, use MS over flow style style oops none so that is for internet explorer and edge and now for firefox we need to do scroll bar width none and then i also need to do nav webkit scroll bar display none just to account for all the browsers okay and that just means that that won't be there but we can still scroll which is quite cool next i want to style the buttons if they are disabled so i'm going to say that if a primary button is also disabled then i want to make sure that the background color is uh i'm going to go with 255, 255, 255, and then the font color is going to be RGB 172, 172, 172. Okay, so that's what it should look like. Pretty cool, right? Let's move on. Let's sell the cards next. So this time for the card, well, I'm just going to grab the element with the class name of card, so dot card. I'm going to give it a height of 100 pixels, so each card should be that high. The width will be 100% of the parent element. The padding will be five pixels. The margin is gonna be 10 pixels from the top and bottom, zero from the left and right. Okay, so again, I'm just styling this up. Let's make the background color white. So let's just take this, because this is white. And let's round off the edges with some border radius. I'm actually gonna go with 10 pixels. And let's make sure that the box sizing is in the box, not outside of the box with border box. Okay, great. So that's what they should all look like. However, let's work on the images and stuff next. So I think let's actually uh, say that if an image container lives inside an element, with the class of card. I want to make sure that the height of it is 100%. The width is only 100 pixels. Uh, let's round it off as well, border radius 10, and I'm going to go with overflow hidden. 
okay and now I'm going to say that any image that lives inside the image container that lives inside an element with the class name of card is width I'm going to make the width a bit bigger just in case there's some funky behavior happening uh, with the sizing of the images but essentially it will kind of crop them to look like this great I think this is looking good next let's actually work on all the uh, wording and everything like that next so I'm going to also say that any h5 element or any p element that lives inside an element with a class name of card so that should be a comma and this should be a dot I'm going to say that I just want the margin to be zero and I'm also going to say that any uh, h5 element that lives inside the card is going to have a font size of 12 pixels so I'm just overriding a bunch of stuff and again I'm going to do something to the p element uh, I'm going to say that the p element actually maybe we should just make it the same font size however I'm going to go with color rgb 133 133 133 let's see what that looks like with font size 12 uh, maybe let's make it slightly, this one's slightly larger. So there we go. Great. Now on the card, I'm also going to use display flex so that everything inside of it appears from left to right. Okay, rather than stacked on top of each other. So that's already looking better. And next, what should we tackle next? We've got the P element, we've got the image container, we've got the image. Let's work on the text container. So everything that holds our text container I'm going to say that the width of this should be 180 pixels the padding should be zero from the top five pixels from the left and right and that just means that it looks a bit more like this let's also style the circle that holds the percentage difference so I'm just going to go with circle as we did give it just the class of circle and the circle is going to have a background color of RGB so the same kind of green, I guess, as we're using. Um, let's make it a circle. So 30 pixels height width is going to be 30 pixels as well. And then the border radius. Um, let's just go with that, even though it could be 15 maybe, but we need to account for the letters in there too. The letters also should be white. So 255, 255, 255 is the color I'm going to go with. Padding five pixels for the text and then I'm just going to center it so display flex initialize flex box we've already got a height and width so we don't need to worry about anything else let's align the items and justify content center as well so that should look like a little circle and it does just a bunch more stuff to do I'm also going to grab the uh, well maybe let's grab the feed right so that is essentially this that holds all our cards so let's do that maybe above the cards or oh, it doesn't really matter we could do it at the bottom so dot and feed and I'm going to set the hard code the height to 400 pixels so that we can give it an overflow y of hidden okay and this time we do actually want that little scroll thing so overflow y scroll why is it not scrolling uh, that's because it shouldn't be hidden it should be scroll so now we can see that here but I actually want that there so I'm going to keep that there great um, the other thing we need to do is actually grab the info container and the info container I'm going to give it a position of relative so that we can grab the a element that lives inside the info container that technically also lives inside the card so maybe let's do that so it's more readable in here and I'm going to give this a position of absolute of the parent top 65 pixels right 5 pixels text decoration none and then the color of this is just going to be RGB let's go with 50 43 51 so wonderful that is looking so much better i'm so happy with this and as you can see we're starting from the biggest price difference and going all the way down to the lowest so that is the best deal of the day great 
So I hope you love this as much as I loved building it. I hope you've learned a lot. Of course, we have Amazon. You could have had AliExpress. You could have had eBay. You could have had Etsy. And of course, you get all the information you need here in your app. But if you need more information and you actually want to buy it, it takes you straight to Amazon. So great. I hope you uh, enjoy maybe even using this and finding some great deals so that you can, you know, potentially start Amazon reselling or I don't know what else there is to do with Amazon, but I hear there's a lot. One final thing we do need to do is actually just uh, put these in the .env file so they are kept safe, so the username and password. And for that, I'm just going to create one more file. So new file, it's a .env file. So just add that. And then on the server, I'm just going to get all of this. This is the username. And I'm going to just define username here. And then we have password as well. So let's grab that. And now on the server, I could just use process env username and process env password in order to go into that .env file, but we also need another package. So .env is the package that we're going to have to install. You can see how to use it here. Uh, we're going to have to install it like so, and it just means that we can then use this code in order to use it in our backend. So just paste that in, and now let's install that package. So I'm going to get up a new terminal. Uh, window and do npm i dot env and install that package as well. And now that is this, this is kept safe. So if you want to deploy the app, you totally can do. Okay. Again, I love it. I hope you've learned something useful and please let me know what you think in the comments below.